Continuing on with our IBM 5150 project, what I want to do now is actually install one of these little ISA cards. This particular one is the Lowtech XTCF Lite Revision 2. And what this will allow me to do is use a compact flash card as a hard drive. Now why would I want to do that? Basically the original MFM hard drives that came with the IBM 5150 are terribly unreliable. They're really hard to find work in these days. And if you do, chances are it's not going to work very long. So why not um, just use a modern alternative that will allow me to uh, enjoy having a hard drive that I don't have to worry about it dying uh, at any point. So this particular card, I didn't solder it myself. I attempted a similar unit that um, Sergei Manislav made, but the problem I have, and let me see if I can get this on camera here, is soldering the um, compact flash card connector. You can see how tiny those solder joints are. Supposedly you can do a drag soldering technique, but I do not have the skill to do that. So every time I tried it, it ended up um, having solder bridges. So I broke down and just bought this one. Um, when I bought it, already assembled, it had the ROM chip, just like this one, already installed. But I ended up robbing that ROM chip to use on a different model that I was able to get to put an IDE uh, compact flash card interface in my um, IBM PS2 model 25286. And eventually I will do a video about the uh, model 25286. Uh, but suffice it to say, this unit uh, will not work without the um, EEPROM chip. And uh, I ordered several from Mauser, and they showed up the other day. So now we're going to uh, go ahead and program this thing with the uh, ROM that I know that works with this. And then once we get that done, we're going to slap this baby in the 5150 and uh, I'll be able to use it like a hard drive. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is flash this um, ROM chip. And to do that, I have a little, uh, what's called a Mini Pro EEPROM programmer. It's straight out of China, and I think I paid 30 bucks for it, maybe. Had it a little while, I used it to um, program the ROM chips for the Manislav model that I used in the um, IBM model 25 uh, 286 so I know it works fine I've got it hooked up to my laptop and I've installed the software the first thing we have to do oh and uh, the model on this in case anybody's interested is the it looks like um, TL 866A so if you're looking for those on eBay it's the TL 866A um, so the first thing I'm going to do is slot the chip into the EEPROM programmer. Let me get my camera moved around here. Make this a little easier. And you'll notice there is a little diagram right here on the Mini Pro that shows you which way to put the chip in. And uh, basically, pin 1 on this chip is right there where this little dot is. So this thing is telling us which way to put the chip in. So it actually goes in just like this. So to put this in, you raise up the little um, latch and you just slot in the chip. And the slots are really big on this thing, so it's really easy to do. Uh, you'll see in a minute why I have this chip straightener. Because when we go to install the chip in the uh, uh, compact flash um, IDE card um, I will straighten the chips to make it a little easier to get them in okay so now I'm just gonna lower the level lever back down now we turn our attention to the computer and the uh, mini pro software so let me get the camera repositioned and we'll go ahead and do that okay to program this EEPROM I'm gonna use the Mini Pro software that came with the unit. 
it's several years old and came on a little mini CD when I installed it. So, um, you know, it's not something that needs to be updated much because I think these chips have mostly been around a long time. So the first thing we need to do is identify which integrated circuit that we are going to be working with. And I know the brand of mine is an SST. So um, I've got that uh, selected. Now the model on this thing looks like a 39S. 39S. I think that's it right there. SST 39SF0108. Okay, so I'm going to do select. So now it knows what kind of chip we have. Now I need to load this ROM file that I have right here. And uh, let me see if I can remember how to do that. Just going to go to open. Point to my desktop. And that's it right there, the XT, CF, Rev2. Okay, and I'm just gonna load it in as a binary and click OK. Okay, so what that is is the um, ROM BIOS to use with the uh, compact flash adapter card. So now we just have to write it to this chip. So let me see if I can um, go to here. And I go to device and I'm going to do program. Okay, and it says plug the IC in the socket. Click the program button. So we already plugged it into the socket. It's showing us how it was supposed to look. I made sure to do that. It's even showing that the little knob here is in the same um, on the same side as the little circle. So I've verified that. And now I'm just going to click program. And you see the little programmer, the lights are flickering. It did that for a short time, and then it's done. So, programming successful. Let's see if it was successful. So I'm all done programming it. Now let's take the chip out of the programmer. So I'll just raise it up, the little latch, and lift this out. Okay, so now we've got the chip, and here is where the chip goes, okay, in this socket here, and you'll notice the socket has a little notch down here, the chip also has a notch. Now I'm going to prepare the chip to go into the socket. Now when you buy these chips from the factory, the legs are splayed out a little bit to allow for a tighter fit. A lot of people, in order to uh, get the legs to be closer together to make them easier to insert into sockets, will roll them on the uh, edge of a table like this and get them um, bent in enough to go in the socket more easily. I don't have the physical skill to do that. I tend to put too much pressure. So a few years ago on eBay for about five bucks, I bought this pin straightener and uh, it's going to do that for me and apply uniform pressure. So I simply just lay my chip in there and I squeeze this together and now the legs of the chip are very, very straight up and down and not flayed out. So to insert this into the um, compact flash adapter card, I'm simply going to Align the legs on both sides. Okay, oops. Looks good on that side. Okay. I think it's down in the. Oops. 
I think it's down in the wops on both. Feels like it anyway. Yep. So now, and I did line the notch up. There's a little notch down there on the chip and on the socket. And then I just push down evenly. And before you plug anything in, it's a good idea to inspect um, both sides to make sure that none of the legs are sticking out. And guess what? They're not. The compact flash card that I plan on using for this, um, I've had for a very long time. Uh, probably since 2001. Because I think for Christmas 2001, my mom got me a digital camera. It was like a Kodak DC 3000 or something. And so uh, it had two or three megs of onboard memory, so you couldn't take many pictures. So I paid $200 for this. This is a 128 meg um, compact flash card. So it's kind of amazing that I'll be able to use that now on my little IBM 5150. And at the time, that would have been an unheard of size of hard drive anyway. So it's not going to matter that it's really small. And for me personally, I think it's kind of cool that... Um, this is actually something from from my youth and I can still use it so to uh, use this thing all you got to do is slot it in like that and just push it onto the pins let's see I don't think I have it in there just right no I don't it's got these old guides and this is a smaller uh, compact flash card than some of them that it can take now the more modern ones let's see I don't want to damage anything I actually had to slot it in off camera because um, this is an actual shorter um, compact flash card than I've had in it before and the bigger ones is a little easier because it just slots in it holds itself up there's little rails in here to support this shorter hot compact flash card so I couldn't get it slotted in without um, putting it right in front of my face so now let's install it in the uh, 5150 I'm not going to get that on camera it's just a matter of taking off the back plate and putting it in an ISA slot but I'll show you what it looks like once I get it in a few moments later I actually had to slot it in off camera because um, this is an actual shorter um, compact flash card than I've had in it before and the bigger ones is a little easier because it just slots in it holds itself up there's little rails in here to support this shorter hot compact flash card so I couldn't get it slotted in without um, putting it right in front of my face so now let's install it in the uh, 5150 I'm not going to get that on camera, it's just a matter of taking off the back plate and putting it in an ISA slot, but I'll show you what it looks like once I get it in. And there it is installed next to the video card. This particular unit didn't have a um, bracket on it. I think you can get a bracket to put on it, but I'm um, not really going to worry about it because this isn't something I'm going to be moving around much, and if I do, I'll just take the compact flash card out so that nothing's sticking out of the back to get damaged. So there it is. Now let's fire it up and see what happens. Alright, so now that the XTCF card is installed, let's go ahead and fire this baby up. And uh, I'll have to boot off the floppy drive, but I can show you what's going to happen. Um, basically, when we flip the power on, it'll do the memory test. As soon as you hear the beep, I need to start hitting A on the keyboard because the card uses something called XTIDE and uh, that basically is going to take over the boot process and it will by default try to boot off of the uh, C drive which will be the compact flash card uh, assuming everything's going to work. So I have to start hitting A as soon as um, I see the XTIDE thing pop up. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. I have my boot floppy in um, A drive, DOS 3.3. So let's flip it on. And then sit and watch the memory count. Do tell us nothing. I have my finger on the uh, A key. As soon as I hear a beep, 
I'm going to start hitting A. Okay, so I think I got it. Yeah. So this is what the XT IDE header looks like. So the card is working as intended. You can see the chip in the compact flash card is actually made by Hitachi apparently. And now we have booted off of the uh, A drive, but the, um, the um, C drive, which is gonna be the uh, compact flash card, just needs to be F disk and formatted because by DOS 3.3, they had those utilities in place. So let me put this on the tripod and continue on with, uh, with that. All right, so let's proceed with doing F disk and formatting and all that good happy stuff. So I don't care about the date and time, not right now. Uh, let's see here, I need to back this up a little bit so we can see more of the screen. All right, that should do fine. So I'm just going to F disk. This is the current fi fixed disk is one. So I can hit four and display partition information, but I think it's formatted with FAT16. So yeah, it's it doesn't recognize it. Um, actually, it's FAT32, I think, because FAT16 is recognizable, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, so um, it uh, picked it up uh, much bigger than what it actually is, because it's only 120 meg. Um, so I'm going to hit escape, and uh, we're going to delete um, the partition. Oh, this version of DOS is not going to be able to do that. So basically, I'm going to have to go over here to uh, my modern computer and delete the partition off of the compact flash card. I wasn't expecting to have to do that, but um, it is DOS 3.3 after all, and it's pretty old stuff. So I'm going to do that off camera. I'll be back. All right, so I went to my modern machine and deleted the partition that way within Windows 10. Now let's give this a try. I need to create a DOS partition. So that's option one. I'm going to do a primary DOS partition. Hit enter. Do I want to use the maximum size? Why, yes, yes, I do. I have no idea what the maximum size is allowed to be for DOS 3.3, but we're, we'll find out, I guess. So now it's going to uh, to reboot. I have to hit A again because we haven't installed anything. Which I don't even think you install the operating system. I think you just copy it over. So that's something we'll figure out because I don't really have a lot of experience with a version of DOS this old. Okay. So now if everything went okay, I can switch over to C. And when I do a dir, it should fail because I have to format it. Oh, it did. It formatted it already. So apparently F disk automatically formatted stuff back in the day. Um, hmm. It's not telling me how much space is free on it or anything. So, hmm. Right. Well, I'm just for giggles here. I'm going to switch back over to A. I'm going to do format C. Because I don't know if I have to provide it with any um, details to get it to do the format. Yes, we'll proceed. Watch him go. Because there's no seat time or anything like that, so it should be crazy fast.
Looks like there's 16 heads, and we'll find out how many cylinders we have here in a second. What is that? 33 megs. Alright, so that's fat eight, I guess. Um I guess it was formatted anyway and um, yeah so let me go ahead and uh, let's try to copy the um, files over well the first thing I'm gonna do is um, there should be on here a sys command that will copy the system files over from the disk first. Um, yeah. You could actually do that with format with newer versions of DOS, but I'm not sure about this, and honestly, I forgot about it. So let's just do this and see what happens. Well, that was easy. So technically, the C drive should be bootable at this point, but I still want to copy everything over. Nope. And it's still not working proper. Unless they're hidden and it's just not showing me anything. Uh, let's see. It doesn't look like this floppy has a trib on it either. So just for giggles, I'm going to try to boot off of the, uh, the disk now. So um, let's just reboot the machine here. Control Alt and Delete. I'm not going to press A. And it should try to boot off of the C drive. Yeah, the sys command didn't copy that over. Hmm. Mm -hmm -hmm. All right. Let's reboot again. Control delete. And this time I'll hit A again. Like a madman. Because we need to boot off of the, um, the A drive still. So um, we copied the sys files over, but it still didn't seem to do much. So I'm just going to um, try this. We'll just do an X copy of uh, everything on A, and we're just going to put it on C. Let's see if that's going to work. Seems like it's working, but apparently uh, in this version of DOS, sys doesn't copy over command.com. It must just do msdos.sys um, and maybe can fix this. I don't know. Um, I didn't really do a lot of research because, well, I don't know. Let's see if they're on there now. Yeah, they're on there on C drive. So let's see if the old boy is fully bootable or not. Hey, now it's telling me how many is free, so uh, let's see, what is that? Yeah, that's 33, um, 33 megs. It's as big as a hard drive as this thing can support. So um, that's pretty funny. So um, we could probably make other partitions. Um, so I'll go ahead and, and try that. 
um, off of the floppy. Let's see if it'll let me uh, make some more partitions on our big drive. I'm not bad with DOS, but um, I've never worked with a version this old. Um, well, I take that back. I actually had an XT class machine that I built from a bunch of junk um, in high school back in 98 or 99. Um, and it had DOS 3.3 on floppies. I wish I still had the machine. It, it actually had two MFM hard drives and a um, uh, three and a half inch drive as well. Um, so let me create another DOS partition here. And yeah, let's just do a primary, why not? Okay, so maybe you can only have one primary. Let me do an extended then. Okay. Let's see. Hundred and eighty two cylinders. I wonder what size that is. We'll find out. Okay, so now, um, yeah, so apparently, uh, let's see, that would be, yeah, we can do three extended partitions, or logical partitions inside of this extended. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll go ahead and make another. <laughs> and the last one, so yeah. D E and F. Yep. That's amazing. That is absolutely awesome. So let me just display partition information so we can see how it ended up. And you know, in this version of DOS, it doesn't even show you the sizes, it just says your start and end. Um, sectors basically so or cylinders so uh, yeah that's that's awesome so now I have a DENF partition <laughs> for data I guess so I could actually have one partition for nothing but games so yeah you talk about um, you know really segmenting stuff in, in uh, back in the day I guess that's one way you could do it so let me go ahead and uh, I'll hit escape and hit escape and we got to restart um, I am NOT going to boot off the floppy this time even though it's telling me to so let's return this guy back to its official IBM Tyvek sleeve I'm so glad that I have um, official IBM copies not because I feel any remorse for um, you know pirating software that old because at this point it's more about preservation than usefulness um, but it just makes me feel good to see the, uh, the IBM logo so let's boot off this and see if it's happy enough to to boot off C now oh yeah look at that this thing is a regular speed demon now yeah so check that out um, and there's all my beautiful files so now I'm going to go ahead and copy over the files that are on the, uh, can see this is the startup disk. I'm going to go ahead and copy the files from the operating disk. Focus. There we go. So let's pop this baby into the A drive. And use good old X copy. And where's my backslash? And these people that like the Model F keyboard, I just I don't know. I you know, I personally just don't get it. So copy a star dot star to the C drive. I don't know why, but uh, this is exciting. This is really exciting.
And now that I have access to um, a removable compact flash card, it's going to be real easy to get software on here. I do not intend to load software from floppies unless I absolutely have to. Um, there's all of the more operating system type files because I can see that uh, we have a trib that I mentioned a minute ago. There's things like a label and um, apparently something that generates a graph. There's disk copy. I forgot all about disk copy. I have not um, seen disk copy in a very long time. Uh, it copied over another copy of X copy, which I don't I don't fully understand. Um, so yeah, uh, we actually have a bootable system that does not require the floppy drive anymore. And um, I really don't want an MFM drive to put in this because they're just prone to a lot of failure. Uh, things like stiction and just uh, they're unreliable as temperature changes. So I want to end today's video with a demonstration of Display Route 1.0 which is a PC version of a word processor that IBM created. It's actually based on the Display Writer physical word processing machine that IBM made. And you can definitely tell the IBM PC was made by the same people because they physically even look the same. So IBM basically put out this piece of software um, for the IBM 5150. So here we go. Um, the name of the program is DW1PG. Okay, and we get the beautiful IBM logo. Just hit enter. So I'm just going to create a new document. And you can see it's a very basic word processor. As you may have noticed, I really, really have issues with the Model F keyboard. There's a fan following, but I don't understand it. But anyway, to save this file, it's Control F6. Actually, it's just F6. And then we move over and I'll hit save. There we go. And I can just quit out of it. And then Z puts me back out the DOS.